uh, Casey here with VanTripping.com and Mountain Bluebird, and I'm happy to share some more about my electrical system to you. So again, to give you a little recap, I bought this van. It's a 2016. I bought it on the last day of 2016, and I started building it out as a bare cargo van, no windows even in it, in 2017. I built it out a little differently than most. Obviously, as you can see, it's all 80-20 uh, framed, one inch 80-20 uh, framed cabinetry, uh, high density polyethylene um, facing on it, so it's really durable and tough. This was experimental. I did this for function, right? And I did it because it was so incredibly strong, as I've shown before, and, and durable. Dogs and stuff can scratch up against here. Skis can scratch up against. Bikes can scratch up against. I sometimes take bikes all the way up through the inside here in a pedals, scratch against it, it's not a problem that takes it. Anyways, let's go into electrical system today. We're gonna to go to more details in electrical system. Uh, if you watched some of my previous videos, I've shown you some of the electrical system, to, uh, shown you lighting, I've shown you uh, some of the upgrades I've done in my electrical. Here's, let me give you just a quick overview. I have four 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries that are installed underneath the van. Uh, I'll talk about why I installed them underneath the van. When I installed four 100 amp hour Battleborns into this van, that was probably the most anybody, for them, uh, just about anybody had ever done in a Sprinter van at that time. Also, I have a pretty beefy electrical system. I have a 3000 watt Victron inverter, um, which is pretty standard uh, in a lot of builds, but, but at the time was very beefy. Let's see, I have multiple sub panels spread throughout the van, and I did multiple sub panels spread throughout the van. I'll talk about that, why it obviously saves a lot of wire, it saves a lot of um, thus weight, and also makes it a lot easier to make uh, changes in the future. So I'll talk about where I put those and why I did it that way. And another thing that I probably did differently as well is I also ran some, I didn't run any electrical in the walls at all. Um, the only electrical in the ceiling, um, other than the pass-through from the, from the roof uh, to the inside for all my lights around the out outside, which I got into that, I, I think seven, eight, nine circuits up on the roof between all the exterior lights and solar and the awning, you know, awning lighting and all that stuff. And I've gone to a previous video on that, so go ahead and, and look into that if you'd like. Um, but in that pass-through, and the, the lights, where they're integrated within my ceiling, which I've done a video on that, where my whole entire ceiling is illuminated, um, the whole thing is a reflective illuminated ceiling. Um, you can watch a video on that. I have no wiring in the ceiling either. What I do have that's interesting and probably different is I actually pass wires uh, from the passenger side to the driver's side actually through the floor. And I'll talk about why I did that, where I did that, and where's a great place to do that, and how that works just fantastically well. I did not pass any wires at all underneath the van. Um, the only wires that go underneath the van are directly to some sensor or to some other purpose. And so everything pretty much comes straight up and in or straight up and out. And I don't have wires in my walls, ceilings, or floor in order to get penetrated in uh, if someone puts a screw through there or if something fails and I can't get to it, or if there's a short and then I, it's really hard to get to. Everything's accessible in the back of, in the inside of the inside of the cabinets. And I think that's a really big benefit to having all your wiring accessible, easy to get to, so you can repair, fix it, add to it if you ever need to. Batteries. I placed the four Battleborn batteries underneath the van because that was a great spot right there in a recess where the slider door is. Four of them fit perfectly in there. They do have to be uh, alternating in their trapezoidal shape uh, from side to side, which means that I have two of the pair of cablings running down one side and two going down the other side. Those cables are all high temperature rated. They are also, all the electrical tape and connectors are high temperature rated as well. Um, the frame for the that holds up the batteries is actually a structural fiberglass angle. And the reason why I use those is because they are non-conductive and yet incredibly strong. Those are held up by threaded rod to actually existing holes already in the structural members of the frame on the Sprinter van. And then you can even see the air compressor on the front side of that. Furthermore, you can also see that I have a stainless steel heat shield that I installed between the exhaust and those lithium batteries. And I have checked the temperature of the exhaust when the van is running and also sitting idle. And it is well below the temperature threshold of those lithium batteries. So they are perfectly fine and the temperature's down there. And having run battery cell production uh, engineering, uh, projects for Tesla. I'm, I'm quite familiar with the ranges and limits of these batteries and they this is a great spot for them. 
Now, let's talk about the inverter. I want it again, really accessible, easy to get to. Here it is. Bam. So, by putting the inverter right here in this cabinet, and pardon for the dust, I got a lot of trail dust and stuff that's built up over the, over the years of use. Um, but by having it in here, I can take this panel off, I can make changes, I can get to the wiring very easily, I can inspect anything. And so that's it. It's nice and low, it's all the way down mounted on the floor. It's also mounted the outside, so that it, uh, towards the outside, so that it gets ventilation. You can see that I did uh, some vents here in this door, so it gets ventilation. This door was also designed, so it has a little bit of a gap around the perimeter here um, to get ventilation. And also, because the inverter actually ejects heat out the front here and the two sides, out this side here, I actually have a, uh, well, let's go over there, a little perforated, we can see it, a cubby here. I know it's dark, and so for that I apologize. I'll try to put a little bit of lights on here. But I have a cubby here, and they have some perforated uh, plastic on the other side here. It's perforated PVC on either side. So um, this heat can get out that way, eject right out. It can also eject out this side right here where these vents are. And I can take this panel off really easily and get to this. This inverter is totally mounted down. So that's where the inverter is. I am, right now, sitting on a chair. So by sitting on this chair, I can work on almost the entirety of my electrical system and all the main components of it. I can work on the inverter right here, my main battery switch. Uh, I can check the voltage of that. I can um, also work on my AC panel right here. And so all that is, is all integrated right into this area, so it makes it really easy to work on. Now, we open up my main cabinet here. Turn on this light. All of my electrical cabinets, by the way, have lights in them, my main electrical cabinets. You notice I have space in here for to add more. I did have an air fuse panel here. I didn't need it. I repurposed elsewhere. I have a uh, distribution block here. Uh, just interconnect some different sensor wires and stuff that come up so I don't have to, I can run wires and reconnect them. I've got my main fuse panel here with all my main fuses. These pop right off and that's got my main 100 amp fuses and everything else that go to different sub panels. These are my inverter wires. I actually have two inverter wires that go um, down over to my inverter. And this I made myself with some custom uh, bus bar right here just uh, sized out the, the copper uh, bus bar for the right size and built out this panel with all these little fuse um, holders right here. That's worked out great. You think this is not much going on here, right? It's a very small fuse panel and that's because they're distributed throughout where the loads are. Let's get into a little more. Um, when you can look down in here, it's again dusty and so forth, but this is actually a thousand amp negative bus bar, blue C's. So it's very big and beefy. This is where all my big negative uh, wires come in the negative wire from the alternator negative wire from or from the aux battery negative wires for my batteries the shunt down here um, these are negative wires that go over to connect over to another sub panel. Um, I've got my AC ground and neutral uh, right here um, because my inverters right here and my AC panels right here um, all this is here. My house batteries actually come up to this side, um, but they both come up here and my solar charge controller comes right into this panel. And this pops right off this cover and that's where I can get to those fuses from the, each of the, the two batteries and uh, pairs of batteries and my solar charge controller. My solar charge controller is right there. Um, it's easy to get to and, and so forth. And so all of this is easy to work on from right sitting on a chair right up here. Now I can also of course, for my battery disconnect, I can say, you know what? I want to connect only to my aux battery, right? And I can see the voltage drop a little bit because there's some extra load in that. I can go to both of them combined to the aux, and then also I can go right to my house battery, and I, of course, can turn them off. And so this, I can easily do some maintenance on this um, very safely. Before I even open this panel, I can disconnect the batteries. Why did I put my AC distribution panel here? And the reason why is because I didn't want to take up any interior space with my AC panel. I mean, you know, I've got 
a shortage of interior space. The van seems big, but you're always short on interior storage, uh, cabinetry space, drawer space, things like that. And so it really gets sucked up very quickly, um, particularly when you have, like me, a bike garage where, you know, I have, I have room for four to six bikes and I have a queen bed always made up. Um, I have a very large Vitro Free Grow fridge. Uh, it's about seven and a half cubic feet between fridge and freezer. Uh, so it's it's enormous compared to what's in most vans. And I have a you know big counter, everything else. I've gone in a lot of details and all that. Plus I have a two person bench seat back here that also swings around so the passengers can face forward during driving or in camp mode, I call it, facing out like it is right now. So I've got a lot of features and functions in here. So by putting the AC distribution panel out here, I can access it easily in the event I need it. I never really need it. I don't shut things off on here. Right now I have my outside circuit shut off and that's just purely for safety. And the inverter, because it's right here, the inverter output goes right into this AC panel. Now my input for the AC is over there. All right, over here I've got my main uh, shore power coming in, 30 amp. It does have reverse polarity uh, for that main, and this then connects over to the inverter. I've got obviously an outlet over here. I do have a rechargeable flashlight that pops right out in a little holder. I do just to make sure that I'm always prepared for whatever happens, and I've never had to use this for my own van, but I've had to help somebody else out with an electrical issue. Is I keep some parts and tools and stuff, electrical things, actually just inside this cabinet here. Just a really nice, easy place to store them. So here's what I store in there. I keep a bag of zip ties in there. That's an easy thing to store in there. And I keep some different sizes. I also keep a big roll of duct tape. And so you just never know when you're gonna need some kind of duct tape. This is actually good quality duct tape, not the kind that leaves a real big residue behind. So I just keep that in there. And then I also keep uh, a little kit of parts. And in here I have different size fuses of all the different sizes fuse I have. I make sure that I have a fuse, at least a spare for every size fuse I have in the van. Um, I have some little wire connectors, you know, kind of modern kind of wire nuts. I've got a fuse puller tool. I've got some wire and some uh, jumper cables, so in case I need to do a test, and a few other little parts in there. So again, every fuse that I have in the van, I've got at least a spare in here, and some extra wire, so for test things out. And so I can just keep that right in this cabinet right here. And then I also keep some uh, electrical tape, in this case blue, because why not? And uh, a small multimeter. So this is a uh, just a small compact multimeter that I can keep in here. And that's it, and I keep all that stuff just tucked away inside here. So, by having the AC panel right here, let me walk through it. I've got my main coming in here. That's a 30 amp main coming off the inverter because that's what it can do, right? And then it goes into six distribution outlets, so or, or circuits. So I've got one dedicated microwave, one dedicated to my induction stove top. Uh, then I also have uh, one dedicated to an outdoor circuit here, and then I, I separate them up. I have a galley outlet, that's my kitchen. I have my cabin outlets, that's my ones on the other side um, of the van. And then my aft cabin outlets are the ones in the back of the van in the, in the garage area. So by separating them out, if there's a problem of any sort or if there's a heavy load, so if I'm running a power tool off the back there, yeah, if I overload that circuit, it blows this circuit breaker right here but it keeps the microwave and the, and the and stove and everything else running, you know, so it's not gonna affect the other circuits, which is really nice. My main distribution um, input coming from the inverter and the batteries, um, and then my main distribution going out to my sub panel. So all I have to then run are these few larger wires, number twos or number fours or even number sixes um, out to my sub panels. And so let's go over that. Come along with me. Very easy to open. Open and voila, access. I mentioned there's a light in every one. There we go. Now we've got a light in there and we have everything wired up. Um, we've got you know, relays, um, different negative and positive fuse boxes. Everything's labeled, um, as you can see here for all the different things in there. Um, and these blue C's, panels they also come with 
built-in little fuse holders. So I've got those spare fuses in there as needed. And I've got a separate little fuse panel from a heating system, so that turns on by a separate switch. Um, I have here uh, a larger uh, fuse panel for some of the larger loads that come in. It's also another way to separate some of those out, so this becomes a main distribution block for some of the air loads. Carrying off my sub panels from my main sub panel on my passenger side to another sub panel here behind this cabinet, and then another one over here behind this cabinet, which is accessible just by opening this latch. And that allows me to get to all the cables and the back of these switches and everything from just simply opening up that cabinet there. And so that makes it really easy to make a change, which I've done several times in making changes to switches uh, and so forth. Um, also going down behind the refrigerators on the passenger side, I have a little uh, terminal strip here where I have interconnect of a lot of different cables and so forth that come in, my main AC panel coming in for shore power, and also behind, uh, down below there too, my controller for my lunar actuators that raise and lower my bed. Another couple little DC electrical panels on both sides here. Uh, that allows me to control some of the different loads and lights and stuff in the back. And then moving on up to the front, I also have another electrical panel that is underneath the dash. There's actually two of them. One that runs on the house batteries and one that runs on the starter batteries so I can interconnect some different loads and so forth in there. And that's a really nice convenient spot to, that's tucked away up above inside the dash there. And then also down below the passenger seat, I have another sub panel here. And this is also to run my subwoofer, which you can see there, and some other, my amplifier for my stereo system. And then also my air compressor and some other loads are all right adjacent to that. So that way I never have to run big wires very far since my air compressor for example, is right below that fuse panel. And uh, the amplifier is obviously right there as well. So uh, that keeps everything really close. And then the display here allows me to keep an eye on everything as far as loads and solar coming in, battery capacity, and, and all those other things as well. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon.